Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to Edmonton. It's a three hour drive from Calgary. And I will share some tips on how to film big events like this. Two minutes, who's fired up, let's go! Yeah! Hey! By the way, this is my wife, Caitlin. She's driving as fast as she can because there's gonna be a snowstorm today, right? Yeah. And this is the first time she's gonna drive here in Canada. So here's my first step, ask for the schedule. This is a two and a half day event. The first half day started at 5 p.m. in Ed's Bowling. We filmed from 5 to 7 p.m. And the next two days were in Edmonton Convention Center. Also, make sure on what's happening in the day of the event because in this event, one of their main speakers unable to attend on the last day and they need to adjust. So you have to know those things and if you position yourself that you truly care for the event and you are part of it, man, there's a big chance they will hire you to their next event or recommend you to someone looking for a videographer. You can also print the schedule for reference, make it a wallpaper on your phone or if you can afford to bring an assistant that can remind you of the schedule, that's even better. I always bring my wife to second shoot for me and to remind me of the schedule. If you have the agenda or the schedule, you can start creating the story. I review the agenda or schedule the night before so I can plan out my shots. So here's my shot list. I make sure I get variety of shots as much as I can. So here's my next tip. Create a story. I have a mentality of shoot to edit meaning I'm creating a story while I'm shooting. Having a story in the highlight video makes my work stand out. In creating a story, I need to record the audio or the speeches to tell a better story. Now, if you can't record the audio for some reasons, you can do the next step, getting testimonials. This is another way on how you can create your story. People who attend will tell you their experience and what happened during the event. I've been covering events for six years now and in my experience, you can do this in two ways. First, you can grab random attendees at the end of the event and ask them nicely if they can do testimonials. Most of the time, they would say no, but that's okay, you can move on to the next person because some will say yes. So make sure, prepare a set of questions to ask the attendees. And here are some of the common questions I asked. In asking questions, make sure to tell the person to rephrase the question when they answer the question. For example, what does it feel like last night? Like last night would have felt like it was super emotional. The second way to do testimonial is to coordinate with the organizers if they want testimonials. Ask them if they can provide you the list of people, time of the testimonials, and where you film it. If you are doing this, ask the organizers to inform these people. In this event, organizer picked these 12 people. They already informed these people about their time, so during the event, I only sent a reminder text message. So here's my challenge. The organizer gave us a room, which is great, but it doesn't have any windows. My plan for this event is not bringing lights and use windows for natural lighting. So I roamed around and I saw a spot that has a bar stools which I need and windows above which is perfect for testimonials so here's my next tip camera placement I'm using three camera setup just to add context this event hired a big production to handle audio lights slides and two big cameras to feed on the big screen I was informed about this and I got excited because I know there will be a tight shot and a wide shot I asked the organizer to inform the production if I can hook my audio recorder and if I can copy the video recording. They said yes. So I brought my 4TB external hard drive. You have to ask the organizer about this so you can plan the placement of your camera. When I got to the venue, I talked to the production and they gave me an XLR cable and I connect my Zoom F3 to record the audio. He said I can copy the video files during lunchtime and after the event. I saw that they placed their two cameras in the middle. I tried to place my tight shot in the middle but it was too far. I'm at 180mm already. I cropped it in and I'm not happy about it. And since I know I will have the video recordings of the production, I strategically placed mine at the side of the stage. The first camera is the Sony a7 III at 28mm. The second camera is the Sony a7 III at 180mm. I really like how the 180mm looks. It's like he is in a studio with infinity black at the background. 
I got creative with this shot because I'm relying on the person I talked to and we had a great conversation and found out that he was the owner of that production. So it's very important to be friendly and nice to people. I always make friends to vendors, especially to DJs because I really need them so I can record the audio or speeches. And I found out that most DJs want to make friends with us too because they can get some footage from us and use it as their portfolio or marketing video. When I was starting, I felt that DJs don't like videographers because they had a bad experience with us. In order to avoid that, we need to prepare as much as we can, bring the right cables we need, text them ahead of time and just say hi and introduce yourself. I didn't text the DJ in this event because the guy, the organizer who I really know, was the one who was talking to the DJ and I just told the guy the things I need to the DJ which I talked about before in this video. So here's my next step. Don't be just a videographer be a video creator. What I mean about this is don't just document and record like a fly on the wall. Always look for something different that will level up your work. If you can't get it, create it and give instructions like this shot. The guy who was hyping up before they opened up the door, I missed the shot because I was using a Sony 55mm. I was too tight and I don't have my shotgun mic with me. I asked him to do it again and he was gladly to do it again because I know in the editing it will be a great opening scene. In shooting the details, I asked my wife to take the trophy out and place it back to the table. In getting this sign, nobody is walking across so I did walk across my camera, that's me. I don't have to wait for someone to walk, I did this when the event is happening inside and everybody got in. Every time they receive their award, I'm calling them to look at my camera. Yo, yo. Yo, uh, 25,000 and then 50,000 and 100,000. I suggest to my client to have a group shot, so when we did the group shot, I instruct them to celebrate, have energy and passion. You gotta see Barrel. If you can't see Barrel, Barrel can't see you. On three, we're gonna celebrate. Ready? One, two, three! The first shot was pushed out at 4K 60p. Since this is a money shot, meaning I will put this in the highlight video, I did it again. The second shot was pushed in. All right, one more time. Ready? One, two, three! And since the production had a wide shot and a tight shot in the middle, I got creative and placed my camera on the right side of the stage so I can get this epic looking shot of the speakers. So I make sure I'm documenting, but also I'm getting creative shots. So here's my next tip. Be part of the event and enjoy it. Be fun to work with. I'm not selling the video output, I'm selling the experience. If I had fun filming this event, people can feel that. People will hire me because they had a great working experience with me. Here's my mindset every time I film an event. I know some people here need video. I know some people here are getting married next year or so. I know people here know somebody who needs video. So be pleasant to work with. Go for extra miles and talk to people and connect. By the way, do you want to see on how I edited this highlight video? Please let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you guys soon.